Good afternoon. Welcome to Grain TV. My name is Cody Bills. This is Brock Shimano. Today is Wednesday, October 17th, and we have the uh, market actually trading a little bit higher here for soybeans and wheat. Let's turn right over to the Firetip trading platform see where we closed off the day here. Corn ended up trading only a quarter cent higher at 4.43 on the December contract. Beans up 16 and three quarters. Wheat in Chicago up four and a half in Kansas City. Wheat trading up four and a quarter. One thing to note here is we did have the government shut down ending here today. The USDA websites are back up and running. Here's some announcements that came out this morning. They canceled the October 11th WASI report. Uh, obviously, October 7th crop progress and the October 15th crop progress were canceled. The next crop progress report will be coming out on the 21st here uh, next Monday. Uh, also, one thing that was postponed, and we haven't gotten a date yet as to when it was postponed to, but the uh, cattle on feed that normally comes out on the 18th uh, will be postponed. So with that being said, uh, Brock, we did finally get some uh, numbers from the USDA. It was export inspections. What did they say and where are we in terms of uh, inspections this year? You know, Cody, it was good to see the government get back up and running, get some more information put back into the market. Um, like you said, one thing that we did see today was the export inspections, and we got a couple of backdated reports there as well. Normally it comes out on Mondays, but the last couple of weeks we've been missing that. Um, what we got basically was uh, pretty good exports uh, for both corn and for soybeans. Um, you know, wheat was lagging just a little bit this week, but if we take a look at where we stand for this marketing year, uh, corn is about 26 million bushels behind the current USDA projections, uh, the seasonal pace to meet those projections. Soybeans is about 22 million bushels ahead, and wheat is about 100 million bushels uh, ahead of pace as well. Let's take a look at the charts here. We've been following all marketing year long. You can see here corn was lagging a little bit early on in the year. We're starting to catch up and we should see the seasonal pace actually pick up here a little bit as we move throughout the marketing year. A little bit of a different story for, for wheat uh, currently. Uh, we have been meeting and exceeding the current uh, USDA uh, projections for uh, the seasonal pace to meet the current USDA projections. Uh, you can see here that we, you know, with all these uh, weeks that we have been beating the expectations, we are about 100 million bushels uh, ahead. So it continues to be a story that wheat has really good exports. Corn and soybeans are just a little bit behind on where they need to be to meet the current USDA projections, but we're pretty early in the marketing years there for both corn and soybeans, so I wouldn't anticipate any uh, any changes in the USDA reports. You know, one thing that you mentioned here when you look at that uh, the wheat uh, export inspections, obviously wheat has been doing very well this year, but we saw a huge sell-off here in the dollar index, and if you take a look over here at Fire Tip, uh, you'll notice that, that it was just a massive sell-off, and I think you know this is going to help potentially wheat and, uh, and soybeans, which is a little bit more sensitive to exchange uh, currency exchange rates. One of the reasons why we sold off here, there was, I, I think it was kind of a perfect storm, uh, and it all contributed to some selling pressure that we saw today. But one, we did get uh, a, a ratings agency out of China that lowered U.S. government uh, their debt rating for the U.S. government. Uh, and I think that that's a, a little bit of a concern. Now, it's not a rating agency that's well known and well followed throughout the world, but I think the fact that we are seeing rating agencies can, is starting to drop uh, the rates, it, it gives question whether or not Fitch will do that and follow suit. So I think there's a little bit of a risk there. The other thing here is that this government resolution that they were able to pass, uh, it, it really only um, moves the problem into next quarter. It, it only provides funding really out until the middle part of January. So I think we're going to continue to see this as a problem. And if we continue to see this sort of political brinksmanship, I think we're going to continue to see U.S. dollar uh, falling here. One of the other things here is that the government data that we should have been collecting here uh, by government agencies is, is going to be postponed. We don't have that data, and that makes it very difficult for the Fed to make their monetary policy. So by the time the Fed is able to collect the data uh, that they need to monitor the U.S. economy, I think it's going to be in the earlier part of uh, 2014 in January at some point. And so it really kind of leaves the door open. I think it's unlikely that we're going to see any serious monetary uh, policy change from the Fed in between now and January. Uh, you know, we've obviously seen them uh, keep interest rates very low. The bond buying programs that they have, I think those will uh, maintain here, and that's going to be negative for the dollar going forward. All in all, the dollar following should help uh, corn or soybeans and wheat in particular, which are a little bit more uh, sensitive to that currency uh, risk. You know, like Cody said, the USDA sites are up at, back up and running. We are going to have some delays in, in the, the cattle and feed report. We're also going to be missing a few reports, but we'll keep you posted as we move, progress and get the USDA back, reports back up and running as they should be. On, on Twitter is where you can find us. At Grain TV is where we're on Twitter. Uh, check us out on Facebook or give us a call here in the office, 877-472-46.